I am a postdoctoral researcher for the Graph East project and I am specialized in uh, urban history, architectural heritage and uh, archaeology. And as a part of my PhD thesis, I have compiled the Genovese inscriptions in the East Mediterranean area. And now, as a part of the Graph East project, hopefully I'll contribute uh, the late medieval inscriptions in Latin in the East Mediterranean area, namely Turkey, Greece, islands and Crimea, and especially the Genoese period that I previously worked as a part of my PhD thesis. Uh, once I finished my PhD thesis, uh, I just made it accessible uh, in internet. And uh, as far as I realized, Estelle saw it and uh, it was helpful for her uh, as a part of the, her, her own research. And then uh, she contacted me about uh, my own research and we had a meeting in Istanbul and it was very nice. Actually, the project uh, is a very uh, multinational project due to its uh, aspects because the area what we call East Mediterranean was formerly held by many civilizations during the uh, late medieval period and all those borders were of course fluctuating. Of course we also have different borders right now. That's why such collaborations are very important as we have many different countries in the area. Uh, such uh, collaborations make uh, the research part easier. For High Middle Ages and the Late Medieval period, uh, the area where modern-day Turkey is located was occupied mainly by the Byzantine Empire. But in fact, uh, with the Late Medieval period, especially after the Fourth Crusade, where Latin Empire was established in the recaptured uh, Constantinople and surrounding territories, also, some uh, Western civilizations started to have some uh, territories uh, in the area, uh, such as the Venetians, the Genoese and uh, other Italian city-states like Amalfi and Pisa. And uh, especially in Turkey, it never stood the same. And starting with the uh, late 11th century, the Turks arrived the area and uh, some Turkish principalities were started to be established in the central part of Asia Minor. Therefore, uh, although the area where Turkey is located is, constitutes just one country today, uh, for the period our research focused on, actually it had much more civilizations than before. That's why it's a very uh, international aspect in this case. The interesting thing about working as a group, as a part of the Graphist project, is we actually all have very different uh, academic skills and research interests. In this case, uh, it's not a team consisted of uh, people from same department, but very different departments. In this case, we have chance to make some uh, good knowledge exchange and some interesting brainstorming about different skills and it's very helpful to improve ourselves in such uh, subjects that we never had chance to have any experience previously. And that's why uh, such an interdisciplinary team is just another advantage of this project. Otherwise, it would be just, uh, it would represent a single discipline, which would be nonsense in such a rich context, namely the epigraphy. That's why we all represent different disciplines and in this case it's much uh, interesting and uh, let me say colorful. Due to the international aspect of the project uh, in the East Mediterranean area and specifically during the Covid period, uh, there were such uh, difficulties that we encountered. For instance, it's not always possible to go all the countries as larger groups and to access databases and museum storages. And that could be the uh, primary difficulty as a part of the project. And uh, otherwise, the research would have repeated itself from the existing literature, which would not be the case. And uh, in, for, for a novel contribution, we must access the original artifacts kept in museum storages, on the site, on walls, on some civil buildings, etc. But uh, 
sometimes during the political situations, conflicts in the East Mediterranean area, in the Middle Eastern uh, geography. And also because of the COVID, uh, it's not always possible to access the object. So that could be the hardest part uh, during our project. During the project, we have some challenges as group, but at the same time, we of course have some individual problems as well. So on one hand, we expect each other to complete uh, the fields that we are lacking of. But at the same time, we are also supposed to understand each other's discipline. So this could be a little bit challenge in the beginning because it's not the responsibility of just one researcher or the other one, but it's, there should be a, a common understanding between each other. So meanwhile, uh, it's, a, it's an advantage. So we are learning new things, but on the other hand, it's an individual challenge as we all need to understand each other's terminology, primary sources, uh, to, to check each other and also to learn some, some things to, from each other. So that's why uh, we are, it, it's not always easy, but sometimes a little bit challenging from an individual point of view. For instance, I share my, my background with others, but they ask some questions that uh, perhaps I've never had any idea about and vice versa. I also become curious about their own discipline. So such, such an individual challenge occurs many times during our uh, teamwork research. Actually, we are uh, living in a very uh, globalized world today and all the information or all the uh, popular trends, the fashion or the music, the culture is uh, globally ac accessible. So actually we are doing something, uh, more or less the same concept happened in the medieval period. As Latin was originally belonging to some other civilizations, it appeared as an alien script in the East Mediterranean area, in uh, the world uh, where occupied by the Byzantines, like the uh, Islamic uh, civilizations, some other states. And that's why we are looking for its traces in a distant area. But now we are living in the global world, it's really easy to give it as an example. And if we go back to the medieval period, of course, the same concept existed, where knowledge, culture, and also the epigraphic traces were spread uh, from one certain place to the other one and had interactions there. It did not stay the same, uh, nor stood unaltered uh, over time. So we have many things to learn from the past, also to understand how things are going on today. Another very important aspect of the Graphist project is to understand the interactions between the languages centered around Latin. Because uh, we tend to focus on uh, aspects from a very single point of view previously, but appearing in a very distant uh, geography, uh, there were of course uh, many interactions between uh, Arabic, Armenian, Greek and Latin in each other. Uh, as a result, the Latin did not appear uh, as it appears in Europe, in the East Mediterranean area. And of course, there were many exchanges in between, some stylistic and some uh, contextual changes. And this uh, subject forms another very critical aspect of this project. As my background is uh, urban and architectural studies, uh, especially during my PhD research, I have realized that most of the uh, stories about cities where civilizations uh, existed almost most of the time were written after epigraphy. But uh, these epigraphic sources were not elaborated from an interdisciplinary point of view, but rather uh, from a very narrow scope, maybe only dates or some names, some little aspects. And uh, from a larger scale view, from my own discipline, from an architectural understanding, I have realized that uh, all those inscriptions are actually having more things to say for, for, for in order to reveal the whole city and its own palimpsest over the time. And uh, I had the valuable chance to interact with epigraphy in this case, uh, which was very amazing, uh, because then I realized that we can elaborate uh, the whole city and the 
its uh, different aspects as a kind of stratigraphy by using epigraphy as an effective tool. So that's why it's a kind of interdisciplinary project. And for my case, it was so far uh, very productive. And I'm really looking forward to elaborate this uh, in novel interpretations from my understanding uh, during the project. It's an interesting question because uh, the epigraphy uh, alone is just uh, considered upon the primary source and the artifact itself. But if we look back and consider the whole environment, uh, there was a huge chain reaction in between. Perhaps uh, there was someone who provided the material and there was a, a kind of employer who wants the epigraphic object to be prepared and the stonemason who prepares the object and of course the builders or the workers who place the object to the, uh, to the position. So in this case uh, I think not to talk about one of the actors during this chain reaction but actually I would really like to see the whole progress from the start to the end. It would be interesting to see what kind of decision making happened, what kind of material chosen and the stonemason had what kind of uh, selections during the preparation of the uh, epigraphic object and for instance did the master liked this uh, object in the first place or it's been removed and prepared again. So what kind of challenges in between? I think just uh, to be a kind of shadow witness to hold this process would be interesting as we only see the very final project, product in the end. So maybe it alone, it's a kind of a singular point of view, but I would really like to see the whole progress as if a small movie. It could be very interesting for me. All the information we know in life, all the uh, knowledge that we learn in the school or we hear in newspaper, in televisions, they are all coming from somewhere. They all have a kind of primary source and nothing is a coincidence. Uh, uh, there, there is always a reason behind everything we know. So in this case, being a researcher actually means not to repeat existing knowledge, but to produce new knowledge perhaps, so by chance, uh, will be taught in schools in future. So it's a kind of exciting thing. It can be in any kind of scientific discipline, but from uh, arts and humanities point of view, uh, having such a research will actually set the future knowledge of everyone. And it will be written in perhaps in encyclopedias, will appear on internet. So to be a part of it as a researcher, to have some original contributions, uh, with uh, scientific contributions, uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. So, uh, in short, whatever we hear in life, they all come from somewhere, but we repeat it. But to uh, make something original is an amazing experience and it's a part of being a researcher. So that's why I would suggest everyone to have this experience at least for a short time in their lives, just to have a taste or just to witness how uh, the data and the knowledge is produced for the first time and that's why I suggest everyone. During my previous researches I was always curious about epigraphy and uh, its relations between my own discipline uh, in terms of architecture, archaeology, uh, urban history and in this case the project was very helpful to make uh, new products and to use the data from an an interdisciplinary point of view. So I hope uh, the end project, when uh, successfully concluded, will be available for everyone and will be uh, accessible online, hopefully. And that's why I'm really looking forward to see the feedbacks and also the contributions of uh, our team members and our uh, other friends, researchers, during this long journey we've just started. So it was a pleasure for me to be here. It's a very tricky question and I would not like to have something very uh, curious in this case. Let me say, rest in peace. <laughs>